This next step is part of the plate supply test. It's not uh, explicitly mentioned in any manual, but it was on the website and it seemed like a good idea. It was explained very nicely, so I decided to do it. What I've got is my oscilloscope here on 3 and 8. And what I have is when I press the test button, I'm going to see the output of that rectifier on those pins. And I'm looking for an even pattern. I don't want one bigger than the other. So what I'm doing is I'm basically going to uh, uh, display it and, and we'll take a look here. We can see that when I hit the test button that they are both equal. And that shows me that the output on both sides of the rectifier is, you know, pretty much even. Well, in this case, very even. Uh, no problems whatsoever. So we can move on to the next test. Running the test again, this time on the taps for the transformer to check the balance of the 5Y3. And I have everything set up, so I'm going to hit the test button from the bottom of the unit. And we can see that it is evenly balanced. And that concludes that test. So everything looks good. The, both tubes are healthy. They don't need any replacement. They passed on the tube tester and this test. So it's conclusive. Our next test is going to require a 50K shunt. So I've set up a 50K resistor now in preparation for that. Same procedure as usual using the shunts, except that the value has changed. And we are now in pins five and eight to measure the grid bias. So we will check our line test first and make sure the line test is good. Very hard to do with the camera in front of me. Do my best. I believe that's right. And then what we're gonna do, we'll turn the bias up to 100 on the knob right there. Then we're gonna hit the test button. And wow, we got 40 right on the money. That is perfect, look at that. So I'm gonna let go of the test button and that does not require any adjustment. What I am gonna do, however, is I'm gonna show now what would be adjusted if this were not within 40 volts DC plus or minus two volts. But what I would also like to show is I'm going to remove the shunt from here, which by the way, also relieve that short light right there. I'm gonna hit the button again and show that without that, it shows 42 volts, 42.2 without the shunt in place. If adjustment were required, it would be on this first resistor here with the orange wire coming out of it. And how this works is, is that screw would be loosened. And the, um, it, it states in the, uh, in the page, and I believe them, that this is very delicate. So you ensure that this is completely loosened and then it would be moved up and down obviously to increase or decrease the resistance, thus changing the voltage. So it goes without saying, but I will say it, that when adjustments are made on this, it requires the removal of this from mains voltage, adjusting, turning it back on, and then remeasuring, and then readjusting again until you get that 40 volts or close to it is possible when, when you measure it with the bias at 100 as I just did in that test. For my next test, I'll be setting up with a 10K shunt. This test will be largely the same as last one, except I'm going to be setting the bias uh, just off camera here to 22. So I'm turning that now. The bias is now set for 22. And when I run the test, I expect a, a three volts DC plus or minus 0.2. This shows a 3.2 uh, in about the right location. It, it's hard to get these these bias and shunt knobs are exactly specific, and, and this is a contentious issue on this unit. But I'm gonna say uh, close enough, close enough for government work anyway. Uh, if it was off by a magnitude, it would be something I would address. So we're gonna call it three, two and, and not worry about it. So I'm gonna move on to the next value. The next two tests will use a 50K shunt again. Next value has the bias knob at 50, and I'm gonna push the button and what we're supposed to get is 13.4 plus or minus one volt. And that means that this is within tolerance. So this value is good at 50. I'm gonna move on to the next one. Next one is 75 on the bias knob, uses the same 50K shunt as 50 did, right? And it's supposed to be 25.8 plus or minus one volt. We're seeing 26.5. And this one is also within tolerance. So in looking at the results for bias, I had come to find that there was a commonality here, that if I actually uh, move the knob down uh, two dashes on each one, it brought everything pretty much into position, right? 
So instead of doing anything crazy with regard to recalibrating anything electrically, this was more of actually a mechanical issue. So I just went in and took the measurements as if they were measured too lower and reevaluated them. And when I come to find that that was true, I actually went and took the knob and moved it over two dashes on the potentiometer and reinstalled it. Just loosening that screw, uh, shifting the knob over the amount of dashes and tightening the screw again. So here's the new numbers as a result. This is bias of 100, looking for 40, and we got 40 right there, and 75, and we're looking for 25 and a half, and we got 25.9, well within tolerance, and the other one is 50. It's hard to do through the camera to get it just right. 50 should be 13 and a half. We're seeing 13.8 well within tolerance again. The other one's 22. I'm going to have to change a shunt for that. 22 is at 3.1. Calling that good. So that fixed this nicely just by uh, shifting that dial ever so slightly. The next test will use a 120K shunt. This is the low screen voltage test, and this will have the bias at zero, and the function will be set to B. We'll get our line test all set up and the sockets will be pins four and eight with our 120K shunt. So as I check my line adjust and hit the test button, I can see this is just above 54 and I should see 56 plus or minus two. So this is within tolerance. I'll go over where the location is to make adjustments to this if necessary. When I was able to get under the uh, line test properly to adjust it, I see that it's 54.6. Yeah, everything everything's fine on this one. I'll still go over where it needs to be adjusted. Also, we can hear the air conditioner click on. And when the AC clicks on, we can see the line voltage drop too. And if I click it now, we can see it's 53.6. And that's what's uh, causing some of the confusion here. The line voltage has gone down. That's okay, this is not part of calibration. I just have to keep that in mind. If an adjustment needed to be made to that voltage on the same resistor as before, this gray wire right here, this slider, if you wanted to increase the voltage, you would drop the slider down. If you wanted to decrease the voltage, you would raise the slider up. And that's how it would be done with the device disconnected from mains power and retested until it was accomplished where it was within specification. This is the bridge balance test and this was not the best explained test out of out of all the ones listed in the article, right? But I'm going to do my best to, to re-explain it here. Uh, the shunt is set at 3000, okay? So I, I put that right there. And I have a connection here on pins 3 and pins 8. And they are going back to a resistor. The, the, the fluke is not in play here. We're not using the fluke at all. And it is connecting to a 10K resistor in at about 10K, right? Rated at about 10 watts, right? So I've had to do some some voodoo, some configurations of resistors to make a, a, a network for a 10K uh, at 10 watts to support this. And even doing this, when I do this test, I'm splitting it into two parts to make sure that the resistors don't get too hot. There's no need to do this all at one shot, so we're gonna get started. So the way I understand this is when I hit the test button, okay, we're going to see the meter drop almost all the way to zero, but not entirely, not in the same way it would as if there, these weren't shorted through that resistor. And what I'm going to do is I'm very slowly going to turn shunt all the way up uh, to uh, the top of its rotation. When you get to the top, weird things will happen as you go past uh, its maximum throw at both ends. We're not going to worry about that. What we're just worried worried about is the top of the annotated notation, right? And we're looking for just the minimum amount of, of deflection here, like it should sort of hold its own and just move a little bit because this is like, again, even mentioned in the article, this is like old stuff. It's it's not digitally controlled. What we're look not what we're looking for is stuff that just going to bounce out here and go crazy to show that there's a problem, right? That's what, that's what we want. We want them to, to make sure everything's canceled out and working right. So I'm, I'm going to start now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and talk through it, but I can take forever because it can generate a lot of heat really quickly. Okay, and, and my resistors are kind of ad hoc. So let me get started now.
I'm going to hit test, right? And we can see that it's on that bar right there. And I'm very slowly just going to turn, right? See, I'm up at 90 now. And turning, see, I'm at 95. And just as I get to like a hundred, things get things get weird. But right up there to about ninety five. And and when I say weird, I mean just at the very edge of, of deflection here, but nothing nothing alarming. I'm not worried about this at all, right? So I'm gonna make my way back down. This is very good right here, all the way to three thousand. And now I'm gonna wait a couple minutes for the resistors to cool down. Now I'm going to continue the test from 3000, right? Same thing, except I'm going to slowly draw it in the other direction. So I'm turning it. And everything is looking really good, right? And you can see it bounces a little bit. It's not entirely perfect. But it's not, it's not terrible, right? Nothing that will require any adjustment. I'm down to 30 now, by the way. It's going to be 20. 15 right there as you get like right to the end of the extremes like I said it goes nuts but all in all unless you're using a shunt of 2 or 100 yeah I don't think there's going to be a problem and, and I would I would doubt there would be a shunt of 2 or 100 uh, one thing I will point out though right as I hit the test button as shown before, the uh, 1500 or 15,000 marker uh, still shows perfect alignment with 3000. I could even go past there. You know, it's not till I, I get a couple of notches past there that I start to see any movement whatsoever. So, yeah, this test, this bridge balance test is good on these knobs. It would have been a horrific amount of work to fix something like that. So I'm glad I don't have to, right? And unsolder them and do all sorts of things. So that concludes the bridge balance test. I'll let these cooking resistors cool down and then I'll move on. Before you conduct this next test, you're gonna be using a 6L6. In my case, a 6V6, you will be setting it up as per the roll chart configuration. That includes all switches, bias, shunt, and filament. This is gonna be the last test of the calibration. This is going to be the gas test, and I want to be very clear about how this is set up so there are no mistakes. I'm going to be using an, an actual tube for this test uh, when conducting it. Uh, obviously, because of the way uh, the instructions are done, it recommends using a, a 6L6. I do not have a 6L6 that I could guarantee as gas-free. I'm using a 6V6. Uh, that said, 6V6 and 6L6 use the exact same knob configurations. However, the shunt and bias are different on a 6V6. So be sure that if you're using a different tube, you are going to have to configure either way, be it 6V6 or 6L6, you're going to have to configure the shunt and bias. Do not leave them at zero for this test. I want to make sure I emphasize this point. What I have done is this. I have uh, clipped in, and, and I realize this looks ad hoc. There's really no good way to do this test. I've clipped in uh, some cables on pins five and pin seven on this tube, and they are going to a one mega ohm shunt uh, down in the box over to the left. And what I am I'm, I'm going to do here, and I'm, I'm very quickly gonna go into this because this isn't so much about the regular test of the unit, it's about a gas test. I'm gonna run a gas test right quick. And what we expect is this tube with no gas, passes no current. Again, really quickly, I should expect the needle to go down to zero. So I'm gonna hit test first, right? Runs the test, when it settles down, I'm gonna hit gas, and the needle is right there at zero. Now, what I should expect is when I hook my one mega ohm resistor, it should jump up one division. And I've hooked up my one mega ohm resistor, it has jumped up one division exactly. I let go of the test, and that means the gas test has worked perfectly. That completes this test. So what I'm going to do now, because I have this set up with wires hanging out of everything, I'm going to shut down the power, right? And now I'm going to carefully remove these tubes 
and this concludes the video of the calibration and testing of the Hickok 6000 tube tester. I hope you found this video enjoyable and informative. Thanks for watching.